So a moment ago we were talking about updates and why updates are important. Uh, oftentimes you're going to get up more updates from plugins than themes or the WordPress core. So be mindful of that once you start adding plugins. Because the thing is, you can add plugins, but you don't have to activate them. So let's look at this. On the left side where you've got your plugins menu item, just click, uh, hover over and select installed plugins. Under installed plugins, then, we see three plugins, Akismet Duplicator and Hello Dolly. A moment ago, we just updated the Akismet plugin, but Akismet is not even active. It says, please activate me there, basically. Another plugin called Hello Dolly is there, but it, that one's not active either. The only one that is active is this one, Duplicator, because we've got the word deactivate. I guess also because it's blue that tells you that it's active. They've gone with a new color scheme. Uh, active plugins that are currently updated are blue. Active plugins that need updates are red. And then update uh, plugins that are not active, not in use, are, are grayed out. So we were asked to update a plugin we're not even using. So this is what I'm getting at, that you can add as many plugins as you want to WordPress to give you even more features that are not available, but all of those plugins are then going to be wanting to be updated. And if you're not using all the plugins, that's going to be using up your bandwidth. That's going to be slowing down your site. All of these plugins you're not even using, but they keep checking the mothership. Are there new updates? Are there new updates? Are there new updates? That's going to be slowing down your site. So my recommendation is to only have the plugins that you're really using installed. Um, you might try a plugin and then it didn't work for you so you deactivate it, but that's not the same as deleting it. It's still going to exist on your server and want updates and such. So this Akismet plugin that we got, that we just updated, actually this is one of the plugins I recommend. I'll explain what it does and why we want it in a moment. But the plugin that everyone gets when you first get WordPress is Hello Dolly. And this one is not really useful at all. It's just there as sort of like a proof of concept. Now notice what the what the description says. This is not just a plug-in. It symbolizes the hope and enthusiasm of an entire generation summed, summed up in two words, words sung most famously by Louis Armstrong. What does that mean? It doesn't mean anything. It's just that this is a plug-in from the creator of WordPress, Matt Mullenweg. He created WordPress, started the WordPress company, got really famous, all of that. So I guess they still, for tradition, put his original plugin in there. But it doesn't do anything. There haven't been updates to it in a while, although it's on version 1.6. It doesn't do anything. So if there's a plugin that you don't need at all, what do you think you do? So let's select to delete Hello Dolly. You don't have to turn on the check mark. You can just click delete on it. It'll confirm, because that may be connected with other files, usually just the files that it creates itself. But I'm going to say yes, delete those extra files. And now I've only got two plugins, Duplicator, which is active and updated, and Akismet, which is, act, which is updated but not activated. A, used by, a, by millions, Akismet is quite possibly the best way in the world to protect your blog from comment and track back spam. It keeps your site protected from spam even while you sleep. To get started, click Activate, sign up for an Akismet API key, go to your Akismet config page, and save your API. So what this does is it, it helps protect your site. WordPress by default lets people comment on your site. Um, we would activate the ability to moderate comments, and then those comments will not be displayed right away. That's good. But then now, we're going to get notifications that we've got another spam, another spam, another spam, and we've got to, we've got to trash it or approve it or whatever. Akismet is a middleman. The spam is going to, get, is going to come, Akismet's going to process it and just get rid of it and never even send it, to your, send it to your email to deal with. It'll just get rid of it. Because millions of people throughout the world use Akismet, 
and therefore it's building this amazing database of what spam is. And so if some spam bot is trying to write something on your site and it trips the akismet net, then it's gone even before you have to deal with it. So akismet is one that I do recommend, that I do use for clients. It needs a little bit of setup. We won't set it up just yet. It's not that complicated, but it tells you activate it, follow this link to get the the key to use it, and then go to the... Once you activate it, there's going to be a configure screen, and then you copy the key that you got, and you paste it in here, and now you're protected. Again, I'll get back to this plugin a little later, but it's a good one. Um, I'm going to be mentioning about five plugins that I recommend for everyone. Um, Akismet is one of them especially if your site is going to have the ability for people to comment. Are they going to comment on a post, on a page? Are they going to comment on a product? Testimonials might be nice, but of course that can open us up to spam, so Akismet can help us with spam. So don't activate it yet, I'll get back to it. That's one of the ones I recommend. The other is Duplicator. I recommend that one because it helps you make a perfect copy of your site and therefore keeps you safe. Um, gives you that safety net in case things go wrong. If you make a duplicate copy now, something happens, your site gets corrupted, you can bring it back to life with Duplicator. You do your updates and something breaks, you can bring it back to Duplicator. You're going to move away from GoDaddy to Bluehost. You're not going to be able to transfer automatically, but with Duplicator, you make a copy and then you can resurrect it from the GoDaddy server into the Bluehost server. So it's a very useful plugin. And it's created by the company Life in the Grid. So you think, well, that's a great plugin, and it's worked so fine pretty well for me. What's the catch? Many times, a plugin or a theme operates on the freemium model, meaning that you get most of the features for free. And there's a few features that might be at a premium, which might cost $5, $10, $50, $100. It depends on the plugin. It depends on the theme. But Duplicator follows that model. It's all free for everything that we've done and what we need to do. But if you run into problems and you need tech support, they'll sell you tech support. That's where the premium part comes in. I don't know the price because any problems that we've had with a client and duplicator, we figured it out ourselves. And in my company, there are several people that are very tech-savvy. We figured it out. You might not be able to. Well, they'll sell you some tech support. The author will, with your permission, of course, log into your site, figure it out, and fix it. I don't know the prices, but many plugins are like that. You get it all. It works perfectly fine. Extra features or tech support, you pay a little. Even when we get to the point, when we get to the point of the shopping cart, even that is a freemium as well. We'll be able to set up our shopping cart completely for free. Fully functional, selling products, everything about it for free. Some features that some people will need, though, they'll be part of the freemium. You'll have to pay a little bit. Um, but with the clients that I've worked with, we've used the free version of it, and we've been just fine. We never had to pay for the extra features. Question? I think, yeah, they, I think they offer that service as well because it's their plugin, it, it does that, so that's something that they would sell you as an add-on, as, as a freemium. Yeah. So those are, those are two that I recommend. Here's a few more that I recommend. Um, there is, um, this is regarding more SEO, search engine optimization. Let's say a person, let's say you had victor.com slash about dash us, and you've had that maybe for a year, and then you take an SEO class and find out that it's actually better to simply call the page about. The shorter the better. So you go into your WordPress and you change your permalink to now say about. Well your site might have been out there in the world for a year and there might have been a few links here and there that were pointing to about-us which now no longer exists. 
what exists is about. So you're going to get broken links. The search engines are going to see there's a broken link here. We're trying to find about dash us and it doesn't exist. So there's a plugin that will redirect the traffic from the wrong address to the right address and do it in a legitimate SEO optimized way. So I use again, my company uses this plugin that I'm about to show you to deal with broken links. To deal with broken links and to redirect the traffic to the correct link, therefore helping our SEO. So I'll show you uh, where to get that plugin. You should be in the installed plugins screen. You should see at the top we've got the add new button right there so click add new plugins this takes us to the WordPress repository and on the top right we can search for a plugin called redirection type redirection and then press enter redirection. Press enter. Get a bunch of results, 1,700 of them, which is the right one. The right one is the one that I'm going to tell you, but if you were searching for your own plugin, let's say you're looking for a, a, a plugin that shows your tweets on the home page or your Facebook stream, you could search Facebook plugin and you'll find a bunch of them. How do you know the good one? Well, they've all got ratings. Uh, this one up here has 151 ratings, 4 out of 5 stars. This one has 57 ratings, 4.5 stars. This one has a perfect 5 star rating, 47 stars. So you also want to read the description. Because there may be a couple of plugins that sound exactly the same. Which is the better one? What I would then defer to is the number of stars that a plugin, a particular plugin has and the number of reviews. Because you're going to run into plugins that have a perfect five stars and you're going to see that it has two reviews. So this was obviously rated by the author of the plugin and the author's mother. <laughs> and it's only got 200 active installs. So only 200 sites in the whole world are actively using it. The one I'm going to recommend should be the first one with this little, these little flowers here, whatever those are. Redirection by John Godley. 400,000 active installs. Compatible with our version of WordPress. Updated one month ago. Four stars out of 151. The most stars that I've seen within this screen here. There might be others that do the same job or a better job. That's fine. I'm just recommending this one because we've used it in our company and it works. We have not tested every single plugin in the world, so we can't give an opinion of every single one, but I would go by how many stars, how many ratings, when was it last updated, how many active installs, and word of mouth. So we're going to use this plugin. I'm going to show you how to use it, and this is one of, one of the ones I recommend. So let's click Install Now. It's going to connect to WordPress.org. It's going to tell you up, downloading, unpackaging, installing, and you have to remember, activate it. Just because you've installed it doesn't mean it's running. You have to remember to activate it. Click activate. It takes you back to the plugins screen, and then here's the here's the great thing and the bad thing about plugins. The great thing is that anyone can make any plugin that they want. The bad thing is that anyone can make any plugin that they want. And the problem with that is that there's no consensus to plugins. When we installed the duplicator plugin, it made itself a brand new item right here. I don't see an item anywhere here for redirection. It's hidden under tools. Redirection.
So some plugins add themselves straight to the menu. Some plugins add themselves to tools. Some plugins add themselves to settings. Those are the three big places. Either the top level, inside settings, or inside tools. If you can't find it in any of those areas, you should still also then be able to go back to the installed plugins screen and probably you'll have settings there. That will just take you back directly to inside of tools redirection. So that's what I'm saying. Anyone can make these plugins. I think there's recommendations at the WordPress uh, site that I think recommend how to make plugins, but I don't know, it just seems no one pays attention because I see some plugins installed in one of those three places. In any event, let's get practice. Let's hover over Tools, Redirection. That was not there before. This is a brand new thing because it's a plugin. It's an extra feature that does not come with WordPress. Let's go to Tools and Redirection. The way this plugin works, the way that I would recommend that you use it, You've got at the top, redirects, groups, modules, etc. Um, redirects is the screen where you say, whenever someone visits about-us, actually redirect them, send them to about us, or just about, I mean, about. The redirect screen is where you would click here, add a new redirection. If someone comes to our site as victor.com slash about-us, have them actually go to victor.com slash about and redirection but actually uh, don't write what I wrote um, because it adds the whole address which I forgot you just have to add the the ending part of the address that's wrong so let me take that back delete that it assumes already your address I forgot about that. It assumes your address. So you would just be writing slash about dash us, redirect people to slash about. These details here, you don't have to worry about them. They should work fine as is. The important part is what is the old broken link? What is the new correct link? Add redirection. There we go. So people ask me with SEO, can I change my address, can I do this, can I do that? And I say yes, as long as you do a 301 redirect. This plugin does that. 301 code redirection, it tells the search engines, this site has moved over here permanently. That's what we want, and it does it for us. Question in the back? No, just the final part, the final change and then that should uh, that should work so let's say I previously again we had contact contact us or contact the company that's not as good as simply contact that's what's becoming standard so if your contact form has something else like contact us contact me contact the company I would recommend simply change your permalink in the actual page to contact and then add a redirection right here. You can add and more than one. Once you're live. Once you're live. Yeah. yeah. So if you... Th this middle part here is a little complicated where you can then create rules because what if I think, okay, what about... won't people maybe s search for contact the company or maybe contact company or contact us? Do I need all three? Technically, yes. And then in the middle here, you could do some matches and uh, special tricks. But for us, I would just say um, you could add in the ones that you know are wrong to go to the right address. And we couple that with this other screen, the 404s. What does 404 mean? You've probably seen these. You visit a site, you get a 404 error broken link. This is going to keep track of your broken links. So instead of me trying to guess what redirect should I have here, 
you go over to the 404's screen and it'll tell you these are your broken links. People have been trying to go to this link and it doesn't work. So simply when you see it here, you're going to have a button. Let me see if I can force one. I'm going to force this to go to wordpress.com slash blah blah blah. That should then pick it up, 404. Not found. And now if I go back to my duplicator, uh, my redirection, look at that. It says, oh, someone tried to go to that address. So this will tell you what addresses people are trying to go to, broken links and such. The point of that is, when one of those appears, then you ha simply have add redirect. And it fills it in down here. Okay, people are trying to go to that address. They should actually be going to this address. That's the point of, of this. So the two screens that you really need to care about, the 404 screens, which tells you all your broken links, where then you can easily add a redirect. And then the redirect screen tells you all of them that currently exist, and how well they're working. Because under the redirect screen, it'll tell you here how many hits has it had, and when was the last time someone visited that correct address. This will tell you also, here's a broken link that someone went to, a little bit of information someone visited um, on Windows using uh, Chrome, and that was their address. So this redirection, this redirector plugin is one of the ones I recommend because it helps you prevent broken links, and broken links are a thing that could lower your SEO ranking. If you've got a lot of broken links on your site, the search engines will see this is a broken site. Why would we put them higher than their competitors? If you fix your broken links like this, then that'll help you in the long term. Any questions on this uh, plugin? Speaking of SEO, here's another plugin that I highly recommend to help us wrangle all of these SEO options. In the SEO class, I usually talk about it, so I'll mention it here, but in the SEO class, we talk more about it. Hover over um, plugins and select Add New. We're going to search for the plugin um, Yoast SEO Y O A S T. It's like yo it's like toast, but with a Y. Yoast SEO. <clears throat> 202 results, but the one we care about is WordPress SEO by Yoast, Team Yoast. It's got almost perfect five stars, over 1,333 stars, and over a million installations, updated three weeks ago. There are other famous SEO plugins. Another big one is called All-in-One SEO Pack. Again, um, every... Uh, we don't always know everything. So if you ask which is better, which should I use? Either one of them should do what you need it to do. But in my classes I talk about this one because this is one of the ones that I have more experience in. I haven't used the SEO pack a lot to really tell you which is better. People come into these classes using one or the other and they're able to do what they need to do. But I teach this one and what, whatever you learn about this plugin should apply to any other similar plugin. But I want to select here then to install now.
And once we get to this uh, screen, we also then want to activate. So go ahead and activate that, uh, that SEO plugin. Question? If you've got that screen, that means that when we resurrected our site, remember there were four options. Number one, view the log. Number two, clean up files. Number, no, number two, permalinks. Number three, test the site. Number four, clean up files. You might not have done number four. That's what that's telling you. So no problem. Just follow that link, clean out those files, and it won't bother you anymore. So after you activate the, uh, the Yoast plugin, notice it added a new item here, SEO. You just install WordPress SEO by Yoast. Click Start to Tour to view a quick intro to the plugin's core functionality. You can do that on your own. I'm going to click Close. But the point of this plugin is now we are able to edit metadata of our posts. Metadata like keywords and titles uh, and other aspects of our, of our site and our pages to further fine-tune and craft the message of our site and therefore show up on, on search results. Because if you take the SEO class, we talk about a variety of concepts. We use this plugin then to add our keywords and our meta descriptions and so forth to our page in the hopes of being easier to find by the search engines. So I'll do a quick overview of this plugin but in the SEO class we, we should go into more detail. We'll probably see at the very top mine says huge I SEO issue. You're blocking access to robots. Uh, that just means that in our reading settings, a while ago, we had turned this on right here. Discourage search engines from indexing our site. It's telling us that's a huge issue. You're telling the search engines not to pay attention to our site. Obviously, if we were live, we would want to turn that off. We would want the search engines to find us. That Yoast plugin reminded us of that. Very helpful. Why did we turn that on? We don't have a live site. We don't have a real site that Google can find anyway. So we have it off. But if we just left it on, would that do anything? Would it bother us? I think, it's, I, I think it is going to cause some issues because you're trying to use functionality of a real server that's not on a real server. So only unchecked that is going live? Mm -hmm. Exactly. It's sort of like when we vote and they say, vote yes on this to not fund that. You know, that backwards kind of speech that they put on the, on the voting material. So this says, yes, turn this on so that no, we don't get found by the search engines. So then when we're live, we know, don't turn that on to yes, be found by the search engines. So they should uh, basically change that on the next version, say, search engines yes, turn it on. Search engines no, turn it off. If you hover over SEO, you get a bunch of options. Let's briefly look at general. If you um, take the SEO class, one of the things we, we do in that class is link our website with, with, uh, with the search engines. The search engines are working 24 hours a day. The little spiders are crawling the web trying to find every website in the world that it can. But there's lots and lots and lots of websites. So it might take a long time for the search engine to find your website. So if you use a plugin like Yoast, this helps you get found by the search engines faster. It helps you verify your site with the search engines. For example, at the top here, there's a tab, Webmaster Tools. And here's a spot where we say we're going to verify our Google account, our Google Search Console, that it knows about our site. We're going to verify with Bing. We're going to verify with Alexa and Yandex. 
we're going to verify with the search engines so that they can find us faster, so that they can organize us. And when someone searches for what our site is about, our site could be found compared to our competitors. We don't do anything right here because we don't have all the information. You take the SEO class for that. But this is one of the features that is very useful in for this plugin. Another is also here, your info. Google shows your website's name in the search results. We will default to your site name, but you can adapt it here. You can also provide an alternate website name if you want Google to consider. So if your website name is the original victorsbakery.com because Victor's Bakery was taken, I can put in the name there so that it's all so that it's all identified as me. Maybe I'm on Twitter, we're Victor's Bakery. Maybe we're on, on Facebook, we're The Victor's Bakery. And maybe my website is the original victorsbakery.com. So if I put the correct name there, that'll help my, my, my schizophrenia. That'll help all of these different names point to the right name on the search results. Are you a company or a person? Well, in my case, I would be a company, and that'll also help you get organized by the search results. You could uh, update a logo, upload a logo if you're a company. Have you seen some search results? You search for something, and everyone's looks boring, but some actually have their logo and make you want to click on them more? That's how we can set that. And there's other things you can explore on your own. I won't quite get into it, but there's a whole section on social media here. Part of SEO nowadays is you don't just have a website. That's the bare minimum. Nowadays, to really be found, you have to have a presence on also some social media. Because everyone uses Facebook. Maybe you don't. Everyone else does. Everyone uses Twitter. You don't. Everyone else does. Everyone uses Pinterest. Maybe you don't. Everyone else does. So if, you, if your company is also on social media, you can connect your social media profiles to your website here and verify that you're the right owner of the website and the social media, and that's going to help your SEO. Because you're going to be publishing stuff on Twitter, you're going to be publishing stuff on Google Plus or wherever. That stuff is going to show in a Google search. And if you do a Google search nowadays, maybe you don't get directly a link to a website anymore. You might get a result of Yelp. You might get a result of Facebook. You might get a result of social media. So if you're on social media and your competitor is not, that gives you more of a chance of being found than them. Is MySpace even a real one anymore? Mm -hmm. Just is. Justin Timberlake bought it, or part of it, and made it uh, a more music friendly site. It's still around. But how relevant it is? <laughs> Unfortunately, not really. But go find your name for somebody else does. Yeah. Or, or find your password that you used to have for it. <laughs> but yeah, this is a good screen just to kind of tell you actually. You should get on all of these. Maybe not link, maybe not MySpace. <laughs> but you should have your, you should at least claim your name on all of those platforms. You don't have to be tweeting every day. You don't have to be Pinteresting every day, pinning. You don't have to be putting something on Google every day. But at least claim your name so someone else doesn't take it before you do. And when I'm going to teach a social media class next month, Fridays, 9 in the morning, where we go in depth about creating these profiles, optimizing them, and creating content. Again, remind me at the day to tell you about future classes, the social media is coming up and the SEO class is coming up. So any any questions about this plugin? I can't get into it all, but any general questions? Yoast has also released another very useful SEO plugin. Because notice here, I don't see anything listed about Google Analytics. Google Analytics is a very important free tool that Google gives us to track all of our traffic. 
Google Analytics will tell you how long someone spent on your site, what pages did they visit, what, what path did they take to go from one page to another, what web browser they used, what phone they used to visit your site, all of this data. And once I know this data, once I know that I'm getting a lot of traffic from Twitter, I can increase my efforts on Twitter or increase my efforts on Facebook to try to get more traffic on Facebook. Once I know that information, I can do a lot with it regarding social media and other SEO tactics. But you need to connect your website with Google Analytics. There's a plugin to help you do that. This is another recommendation. Let's go to Plugins, Add New. Under Search, search for Yoast. Google Analytics. Again, you'll get a bunch of results. <clears throat> the one you want is from Team Yoast, because the very first one in this case is not the right one, even though it almost has perfect stars, but it's not the one we're looking for. We're looking for this one right here, Google Analytics by Yoast, Team Yoast. And it's got, again, over 1 million installs, 310 stars, and 4 out of 5. Okay, so click, uh, click Install for Google Analytics and then click Activate. The sole purpose of this plugin is simply, the main purpose is to connect your site with Google Analytics. Again, we don't have time to talk about what that is in this class. Take the SEO class, we'll have plenty of time there. But the main thing is that this will easily help you connect your site. And you get a notification at the top here and a new menu item. Analytics. Either in the Analytics screen or click on Configure Google Analytics Settings. Right, settings. This is the process here to authenticate. You need a Google Analytics account, you need this plugin, you click there, it'll step you through a simple process. It'll link your site with Google Analytics, and then it'll start tracking this data. And again, uh, my company uses this all the time. This is what lets us know that now, uh, starting this year, basically, maybe in the middle of last year, the um, no, I think it was this year. One of our clients has a is a restaurant, and they have a location in San Diego, and they opened the location in Los Angeles last year, January. We saw it took a little bit less than a year for the location in Los Angeles to now get more traffic on the website than the location from San Diego. What I mean is people from Los Angeles are visiting the website more than people in San Diego. The website from San Diego has been active since 2009 and then in less than a year now more traffic is coming from LA. Once I know that we can start to target on Twitter or Facebook, we can post stuff to target the Los Angeles market because we're seeing more traffic coming from there. Or we can say, well, we want to pull the traffic of San Diego up. They're falling behind. Let's do some more ads or whatever in San Diego to get those numbers up. But I would never know that if I don't have analytics set up. Again, we don't have time to set it up and really talk in detail, but this is a useful thing to to, to set up this plugin. And again, free. If you need tech support, they'll sell you tech support. Or they'll sell you one of these other books. The Yoast eBook, Optimizing Your WordPress Site, $19. Analytics Premium, More Advanced Tracking and Top-Notch Support, $89. The last plugin that I'll mention here that I always recommend and install early on for any client is an official plugin from WordPress, actually. 
if you have a wordpress.com website, it has a bunch of features that our own WordPress does not have. If you get WordPress installed on your Bluehost or HostGator or GoDaddy, it does not have some of the cool features that you get from a WordPress.com site unless you install this plugin, Jetpack, which is free. Let's go to Plugins, Add New. And search for Jetpack, one word. Jetpack by WordPress.com. The company actually is automatic. One mil at more than 1 million installs, 4 out of 5, 622, updated 2 months ago. Go ahead and install that. And activate it. So if you took my blogging class, we had some cool features there. We had the ability to post a blog and it for automatically to be publicized, be sent over to Facebook and Twitter and Pinterest right away. I can post something on my WordPress.com blog and it goes automatically to all my social media. We do not have that feature by default on a regular WordPress site, but we can get it with this plugin with the Jetpack plugin. If you activate it, we have a brand new feature at the top, Jetpack. Um, let's hover over Jetpack and then look at Jetpack. Click on Jetpack. This is telling you that not all features will be active here because we're in a development environment. We're in WAMP or MAMP. We're not on a real.com yet. So some of these features are not going to be active until you upload to a live site. But most of them are and they're very useful. For example, it's got a feature called Photon which will make your site faster. Fast download times are one of the factors that improves your SEO. If your site takes forever to download and your competitors download faster, the search engines might rank the competitor better. Photon is an extra feature that we can activate that'll speed up your site. Because what it'll do is it'll, it'll put a copy of your pictures on the WordPress.com server, which is a global server where your pictures will download faster. We can't use it because our site is not live. Notice there's no activate button. We have something called protect, which will protect people from trying to guess your password. That's pretty useful. That can only be activated once we're on a live server again. Related posts, that's useful if you write a blog and you want people to read more of your blog posts. An another suggestion for a new blog post will appear when they're done reading that blog post. Related posts. Monitor, you'll get emails that say your site is down. You'll get an email that says your site is back up. You lost 10 minutes of productivity. So Monitor will tell you if your site is down. But again, we can't use that one because it's not on a live server. <coughs> we can use this one, Mobile Theme. Mobile friendliness is an, is an important factor nowadays of SEO. If your website looks good on a mobile device and your competitors does not, the search engines will rank yours better because studies, studies show that much more traffic or enough traffic is coming from people on their mobile phones now rather than a laptop or desktop. And in a year or two, it's going to be even more. I think right now it's like 51% or something of people are on a mobile phone on your site. Studies show globally. It's going to be 55%, 60%, 70%, who knows, 90%. Maybe we're going to be using these all the time instead of a regular computer. But the point is that if your site is not mobile friendly, you can just click here, activate, and now it's mobile friendly. Just one click and that makes it experimental. Mm -hmm. 
it does it, it makes it generically mobile friendly it doesn't really craft it really nice as it could be but this uh, will definitely solve the issue if if your site is not mobile friendly and you need to invest the time to make it mobile friendly for the moment you can turn that on and it'll work click on uh, see the other 27 jetpack features there's a whole bunch of other features here carousel to make interesting slideshows a nice con contact form um, what else might be useful um, your site icon some of these we cannot activate because we're not on a live site tiled galleries site verification that's very similar already to the to the Yoast one so we don't need that one if you want to add that little icon notice WAMP has this little icon here. I want my I want an icon on my site, not the server's icon. I can turn on here site icon, and that gives me that little. It's called a fave icon. I can get my own little icon there instead of a generic icon. A more powerful search feature. Other other things. So if not if if the only thing that I recommend about Jetpack is the mobile theme, that's a big thing. But there's other options here that might be useful, like customizing the CSS or the design of the site. Uh, this is more advanced, but you know, if we choose a theme and we want to change the background color and there's no option under appearance to change the background color, we have the ability to edit the CSS if you activate custom CSS, and then you'll be able to edit. But it's going to be letting. It's going to be requiring you to edit code. So if we're not in, if you don't know how to edit HTML or CSS code, it's not that helpful. But for us, that we customize people's websites pretty, pretty deeply, it's a very useful feature. Yes. Is there any reason not to activate all those? Yeah, sort of same. Also, like if you've got all of these plugins and they're all going to be wanting updates. This is similar to that. You might never use the beautiful math, so why let it take up the space and the um, bandwidth and all of that? This is going to allow you, if you're going to write equations and stuff, uh, you can click on any one of these, not the activate, but if you click on any one of these, it'll tell you what it does. So if you're going to write equations and such like that, this is a great little feature for that. But if you're never going to use it, no need to take up resources. So I forgot to say that. If you click on one of these names, not the activate button, but if you click on any one of these, what's infinite scroll? If you click on it, when you write great content, all you really want is people to find it. With the infinite scroll module and a supported theme, that's exactly what happens. Instead of the old way of navigating down a page by scrolling and then clicking a link to get to the next page, waiting for a page to refresh, infinite scroll pulls the next set of posts automatically into view when the reader approaches the bottom of the page more like an app so if I don't want to have people reading my 20 blog posts and go down to next page next page next page they can scroll down and the next post will automatically appear this is just a preference there's no positive or negative regarding SEO but this is a, this is a popular feature sometimes If you don't want to plug in anymore, just hover, I mean a module. If you don't want a module of the Jetpack plugin active anymore, you can just deactivate. And it really depends on your particular needs, which I would recommend. But the mobile site is a big one, and a useful one is Photon, but we can't use it at the moment. Monitor is also good because it'll send you an email when your site goes down. And protect. Protect is a good one. That helps prevent people from trying to guess your password. Photon, protect, monitor, and the mobile theme.
So for the, for the day, what I had planned was to talk about this stuff, to talk about recommendations of plugins and, and updates and the permalink and so forth. So we covered the main things I wanted to, to talk about. This is going to segue us in two weeks into part two of the class where we're going to take this site at this point. We're going to make a duplicator back up again in just a moment. When we come back in two weeks, we're going to resurrect the site again. We're going to get new students in probably. Resurrect the sites and then focus on then the e-commerce stuff. Now that we've got some experience, maybe there's still maybe there's still a lot that you feel that you need to learn, that you're shaking on, shaky on, and so forth. Take the week off that we're not going to be here to try to do some of this at home. And then when we come back in two weeks, we'll resurrect the site and, and go and go on and talk about the whole e-commerce um, ball of wax. Any general questions on things we've talked about throughout the weeks? And let me get a show of hands again. I, I think I asked on the first day, but how many of you never had any experience in WordPress before? A lot of people. And now you've all got some experience. How many of you feel now you, you're, you're a little more confident in WordPress from the, since the beginning? People. Good. Uh, how many of you feel you have now at least basic experience in WordPress? Okay. Anyone feel maybe you've got kind of getting into a bit intermediate experience? A couple people here and there? Good. So how many of you did have experience before of WordPress before coming to this class? A few people. Uh, of you that had experience, how many of you learned a, a thing or two new in the class? Okay, That's good to hear also. So uh, I take all comers in, in these classes and uh, you know we have this range of abilities and so forth and try to get everyone on track and everything. When we come back next time, of course, we assume that we've got this basic experience and we'll proceed. The last thing that we'll do regarding the site is we'll do the duplicator archive again. Then you can take the site with you and work on it at home. And in two weeks, we'll pick it up from here. But since we've done it at least once before, you guys help me out. I forgot. What's the first step that I need to do to make a duplicator backup? We go to the duplicator page. Which one? Packages. Let's go to the duplicator tab and go to packages. What's next on this screen? Create new on the right. So on the right side, we're going to create a new package. Good. What do we do on this screen? Yeah, either or. We can simply click next. We never really have to touch archive or installer or storage. We're fine. But that's a good point about the note. Remember the note. I mentioned this previously. I'll mention it again. If you go up here on notes, you can make yourself a note. What is the purpose of this archive? When we do this for a client, we make an archive and we, we could say before 17 updates or any notes we want here. Let's say we do all of the updates and it worked perfectly. Then we would make another duplicate and we would call that after 17 updates and then you can be specific. Themes and plugins whatever. After 17 updates, site works perfectly. Whatever you want to write here in the notes will show up here when you resurrect the site. Um, this reminds you what's in the archive. What do, I, what do I say? Did I say anything about the name up there? It's the date. I would just leave it as is unless you want to change it. I would recommend as is. It seems to be one day ahead, doesn't it? 30th, but that's fine. All right, good. Let's say we added the note. What comes next? next. Literally next. <laughs> Let's click next. Scanning the site. Very good. Okay, what do we do on this screen? Build. Build. What if we got a warning? You would click on it, and it would tell you what the warning is. Hopefully, then you can fix it. You could either have warning, uh, I think it's either going to say error or fail. So you're going to get either warning, uh, error, or good. 
If we're all good, then we build. If we've got a warning, we could still technically proceed and build, and it'll probably be okay, because a warning won't stop anything. But if it's an error, it won't let you proceed until you fix it. Yes? If you didn't get anything, try to click your refresh button to wake it up. Maybe something happened. So I seem to have gotten all goods. If you didn't get yours, I'll be with you one moment. I got all good, so then I can click build. Once you have it in a zip file, can you transport it between Mac and PC? Yes. The actual contents of the site are platform agnostic. You can take them wherever, use them wherever. It's just that in this room we're using WAMP, and then on a Mac we use MAMP, but the files themselves are universal. How do you transfer from a Mac to a PC if you can't use the sticker because it doesn't recognize? It should. Nowadays, uh, a USB drive should be compatible with either Mac or Windows. <laughs> Has anyone gone from Mac to PC with their USB? Yeah, it should be compatible. Um, uh, what could happen is uh, when you first plug in your USB to the Mac the very first time, maybe it made it only compatible to Macs. Um, so we can look in the, in the lab in your particular case. All right, we get to the screen. What's next? You're going to need to click on both of those to download them. So first I'll click Installer. You should see on the top right, it downloaded. Then click on the second one, the archive zip file. Click on that, and then it's going to tell you it downloaded. If you want to see where did they download to, so most likely it's going to either save to the desktop or your downloads folder. But usually your web browser will help you if you click on the icon at the end. Mine looks like a little target. If you're on Safari, I think it's a little magnifying glass. But anyway, if you click there, it might even be a little folder. If you click on that, it tells me mine downloaded to my downloads folder. Right there. It gave me two files. Installer.php and this zip file. Those are the two files that are a perfect copy of my site. And um, it's very easy then to forget, but I would recommend once those two have downloaded, make a new folder. There's a button there, new folder, and call it today's date. And put those two files into that folder. Some of us had trouble in the beginning of the day. You put these two files in your www folder without them being in a folder. And then WordPress or, or WAMP couldn't find them. WAMP expects your projects to be in a folder. You can't just put them directly into the www folder. You need to have a folder called WordPress or My Site or Victor's Bakery or whatever, and your website has to be in a folder. So I've downloaded those two files, made a new folder, and just drag them both into there. I'm then going to put a copy of my project into the network folder if you want a copy of it. And if you brought a USB drive, then you want to put, you want to take your file with you on your USB. You want to take that folder right there, put it on your USB, and take it with you. And then attempt to resurrect it like we've done in class these, these several times. Either the desktop or the downloads yeah. folder. So in the network folder, I've put a copy of mine. If you'd like a copy of it, that whatever I did with it today is saved there. If you need any help with this, we'll have lab time in just a moment. But um, I have a couple of more, or more things I want to talk about, of course. But I want to make a I want to make an archive of the site.
And that's the whole point of this duplicator plugin. So take a moment to make sure you made that copy. Um, if you need any help with that, call me over. Okay, so there's a couple of more things I want to do before we may end the main lecture. At this point, uh, we've worked on, on the site enough to kind of understand about WordPress and such, but the um, a quick preview of... Um, I'm going to tie a few things together here, but I want to give a preview of, of future classes. Uh, I'm going to open a new tab here. How many of you browse for classes in the uh, in the printed catalog that we that we publish? Okay. How many of you search for classes or browse for classes on our website? Okay. If you don't, I highly recommend you use the website instead of the book, because the book goes out of date. Um, it's happened to me that I uh, a true story was that. Students were asking me, I can't wait to see you on your um, on your SEO class on Monday or whatever. And I was thinking, no, I don't I don't have I don't have a class on Monday. And people were telling me, Yeah, you're listed right here in the catalog, the printed catalog, Monday at six PM. I said, No, I, I don't, because if we look on the college's website, that's the most up to date and accurate. And the college's website said, I'm not teaching a class on Monday. So people were going to show up on Monday to the wrong class or an empty room or something. So the, the printed one is nice and all of that, but I really recommend the, the digital catalog, which is right here. If you want to go to this, go to the, our website, sdce.edu, San Diego Continuing Education.edu. At the top right, we will see um, a big yellow button that says Take a Class. Go to sdce.edu and click Take a Class. And right here you can, if you've got the time, you can browse the 1047 classes. <laughs> Better yet, search. Computers are good at that. Filter results. So here's what I would recommend. You, have, you can search subjects or whatever, but here's what I recommend. This is pretty smart. Keyword or class number. No one knows the class number. Don't worry about that. You can search for a concept. WordPress. And that'll show you all classes about WordPress in this term. They're in the instructor, the date and time and everything. And then what's really cool is then you can organize the column by start date if you just click on it. So this will tell you what you've missed or what's coming up. So for example, e-commerce with WordPress 1, that's our current class, We've got web design with WordPress. Now that's with Instructor Williams, but uh, that was also this month. And then we've got web marketing, blogging as an SEO tool. That's um, what's happening this month on Wednesdays. And then we've got the e-commerce with WordPress part two next month. And then we've got web marketing, blogging as an SEO tool. So there's that, um, there's that blogging class again. 
So it's the same class as the unit. Yes. Misspelled also. Blogging as an uh, SEO tool. But uh, it's the same class. So if you didn't take the class this month, in two months, the class will be offered again. And that one's on Mondays, 6 p.m. So you can search keywords. You can search instructors. So if you type my name, last name, Campos, and then organize by date, you'll see the 12 classes I'm teaching this summer. Usually during the regular semester, it's about 15 to 17. But this is what's happened already this month, and what's coming up next month after the holiday, continuing Monday nights, this part two, uh, HTML Android class part two. You might be pretty lost if you'd come in here without taking part one, but that's Tuesdays and Thursdays. SEO, search engine optimization, search engine marketing. That's the class I'm going to recommend for you next month, if you can find the time in addition to the e-commerce class. Wednesday nights, 6 p.m. for three weeks. Is that three weeks or two weeks? And so um, there's that class. Is uh, it going to save class as you want or no? No, they don't have that feature yet. And then we've got web marketing social media for your business, part one. This is the first time I'm going to teach part one and part two. Usually it's just been part one. The problem there is that it was a four week long class and we didn't have enough time to cover everything. What I do in my social media class is cover one particular social network per day. So on one day, everything that we can cover in three and a half hours of Twitter. The next day, everything we can cover about Facebook and so forth. Question? Yes, these classes are always cycling. They're going to be offered again in the fall. So after the, you know, in September when the, or actually the middle of August when the next semester starts, uh, there'll be a brand new set of classes and days and times, and that class will be offered again. Now in the fall, does it still have just three week classes, or are we now going into full semesters? Well, even in the fall, they're they're not full semester like 15 weeks long but okay. usually my classes are four to five weeks long a whole month but in the summer because of holidays and so forth the classes oftentimes are three or four weeks and a couple are actually two weeks for some weird reason so you can take them again for the four or five weeks when they're offered again no problem question Yeah, search engine for your business, right? Yeah. So, same class, different name. You can always click on a class and read the description, and the description should be the same. Uh, I'm not exactly sure why some of these classes have different names sometimes. Uh, I submit my class requests, and um, it's up to then other people within the organization to add them correctly to the catalog and so forth. But imagine, like I'm saying, if that gets printed, it's never going to get fixed. If I tell them, hey, that's wrong, they're going to fix it on this website. No problem. So you should be relying, in my opinion, on the digital catalog rather than the printed one. So which one would you consider just continuing on the first class and just go to the first class and the second class? There's no part one or part two of a class unless it marks it as part one or part two. So there's no continuation technically for that SEO class. But all of the classes that I teach are very useful to take. They all interrelate. Because in the SEO class, I might have mentioned the importance of blogging. So there's a blogging class. In this class I've mentioned, you need to be on Twitter. There's, an S there's a social media class. Maybe you need to uh, get more experience and information out of Google once you take some of our other classes. There's the Google class. So they all relate. One doesn't really require another one unless there's part one, part two, part three. And even then, technically, you can come to part three if you never took part one. You'd probably be pretty lost, but I have to take everyone because it's open enrollment at this college.
Yes. Okay, so it's not like I don't know anything about social media, but there are some of the social media on our platforms that I have not been able to would it be better for me to wait for the first cycle again to come around for social media one, or do you think it would be the same one to come back in time and we'll be back by the time we start the twenty seventh one? Can I wait for the second one and then go back? That one's actually a special case. So the question about should I take, if I don't take social media one, should I wait for social media one or take social media two? That one's a special case, actually. You can take social media one or two regardless of, of the other one. So if you can't take part one of social media, come to part two, no problem. Every day that we're there, we're going to focus on one network, everything that we can about that one network. So if you didn't learn about Twitter on month one, no problem. We're learning about YouTube on month two. Then you can take part one again when it's offered again in the, in the fall. So those are the classes that I'm recommending for the next semester. Take the social media class and take the SEO class. And then in, the, in two months after that, there'll be part two and, and so forth. Any other questions on these classes? Be careful because they have also got me in 209 for a couple of them. So make a note of those because you might show up an hour early in room 110, and unfortunately the class is in 209 upstairs. I don't know. <laughs> so usually that doesn't happen too much. And then, and then for another reason, last semester they put me also for the first time in 207. So uh, I can't always get the same room I'm always in here. This is one of the bigger ones. But sometimes they put me in a different one, and you just have to make sure you're in the right place at the right time. So those are some classes I recommend in the future.